It's the Christmas season, but one of the world's biggest toy manufacturers is looking a little bit like Scrooge. The following is a world-class Bullshitters exclusive. The WCBS toy videos get around. What I show in them is a mountain of unsellable Disney junk. What most don't realize is that the majority of these toys come from the people at Hasbro. Every Shuri Copter, all the Rose Ticos, and the entirety of the G.I. Joes are from Hasbro. Add to that the Power Rangers toys, the failed NBA line, and the abysmal D&D figures, and you'll see that Hasbro hasn't been making the best decisions. Now, all those bad decisions have come back to bite them, and it's the employees who are suffering. But before we talk about this Christmas bummer, today's video is brought to you by me, Jeff Hicks, and my graphic novel, Stealing Solo. It's Christmas, and you can give the gift that keeps on giving all year long. No, not a membership to the Jelly of the Month Club, but Stealing Solo, a captain's parody. Stealing Solo answers the greatest what-if question of all time. What if a group of disgruntled Star Wars fans kidnap Harrison Ford and force him to remake Star Wars in their basement? It's been called Laugh Out Loud Funny and the best Star Wars parody since Spaceballs, and it can be yours this holiday season. Go to StealingSolo.com right now, which is powered by Shopify, so you get the award winning safety and security, and get yourself a copy of the graphic novel. We even have the fabled Fandom Menace Edition, which is on sale. You can get the entire Stealing Solo Fandom Menace Edition collection for half price. All orders over $40 include free shipping. So go to StealingSolo.com right now, get yourself a copy, give a copy for Christmas, and folks, if you order this week, your book will be shipped out the same day it is ordered. So order your copy of Stealing Solo by 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for same-day processing. There's only one place to get it, folks, StealingSolo.com. Hasbro is slashing nearly 20% of its workforce amid an ongoing slump in toy sales. Hasbro CEO Chris Cox <laughs> has announced layoffs for 1,100 workers in a Monday memo to employees, cuts which come in addition to the roughly 800 jobs eliminated earlier this year. Cox said the decision to reduce Hasbro's workforce was made in light of market headwinds proving to be stronger and more persistent than planned. We anticipated the first three quarters would be challenging, particularly in toys, where the market is coming off historic pandemic-driven highs, Cox said. While we have made some important progress across our organization, the headwinds we saw through the first nine months of the year have continued into holiday and are likely to persist into 2024. Some Hasbro employees will find out whether their jobs have been eliminated next week, while the rest of the layoffs will happen over the next six months, Cox said in the memo. Hasbro, known for making such toys as Transformers and Play-Doh and games like Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons, had 6,300 employees prior to the layoffs, according to its website. Layoffs for the toy company come after Hasbro cut its full-year revenue guidance in October, just before the holiday season, which is usually the strongest sales period for the toy market. On the company's earning call, Hasbro's chief financial officer, Gina Getter, warned that the company was seeing broader toy category declines. However, not all toy makers are expecting weakness this holiday season. One of Hasbro's competitors, Mattel, said in its most recent earnings that it benefited from the success of the Barbie movie and the company expects to gain market share in the fourth quarter and full year. As the article states, toy sales escalated during the pandemic, but not everyone's suffering the same way as Hasbro. There's another culprit. Hasbro's in the business of making undesirable toys, and most of them come from one place, Disney. For today's video, I'm going to show you footage of some of my toy trips, and spoiler alert, they're mostly made by Hasbro. So without any further ado, let's roll that beautiful bean footage and talk about this mess that Hasbro has gotten itself into. Most of the unsellable toys that we've been featuring over the last six years have been 95% Hasbro merchandise created for Disney movies. Those Rose Tico towers, all Hasbro. The solo figures that were clearance for $5 before the movie came out, Hasbro. Everything you see at Ollie's, Hasbro. It's been a problem for many, many years. Beyond the pandemic, for the last few years, Hasbro has been in the business of producing way too much for Disney properties. Check out our pre-pandemic videos for proof of just that. Back then when I made the videos, I always said I felt a little bad for Hasbro because a lot of the decisions were forced by Disney. As we know, the licenses for Star Wars and Marvel are incredibly expensive. Because of that, some of the decisions made by Hasbro are to recoup the costs. That's not an excuse or justification for their practices, just a reason. What has happened is Hasbro's business practices have not only turned off customers, but retail stores as well. Some would assume it's because these companies went woke and people don't buy certain characters. That's true, but it's also Disney's fault. They decide what gets made. They force Rey on you. They demand Agatha Harkness and the Eternals. They decide that Rose Tico needed more than one action figure. That's not Hasbro, and that's where my sympathy for Hasbro ends. As a big collector, Hasbro purchases are becoming less frequent for me. 
From a consumer standpoint, Hasbro has turned off all collectors with their exorbitant prices for these toys. Hasbro charges $25 for an action figure. These figures, while looking decent, are now more expensive and you get less somehow. Accessories are mostly a thing of the past. Hasbro likes to jack up the prices and charge you double if you want extra hands, an alternate head, guns, lightsabers, etc. Your average Star Wars figure comes with one small accessory, and that's it. Marvel figures are roughly the same way. You're lucky if you get an accessory with some of them. With the prices increasing and the value lowering, it's not a surprise that collectors are playing the waiting game with a lot of Hasbro merchandise. But why ever buy at full price when they'll be on clearance at Ollie's in a few months? 95% of the toys at Ollie's are post-pandemic, meaning that the decisions were made thinking about the new world. The decision to overproduce was because of the overvaluation of the IPs. It was assumed that people would buy anything and everything from Marvel. That wasn't the case. Toys from films as new as Guardians of the Galaxy 3 are already on clearance. The newest Indiana Jones film, The Dial of Destiny, had a classic Indiana Jones toy line produced to celebrate its fifth film. The demand was so underwhelming that the line was clearanced and out of stores within 90 days. You'll notice that stores are shrinking their Hasbro sections. The Star Wars and Marvel sections are almost non-existent, and this is during Christmas. There were a few mass clearance exoduses this year alone. Consumers were able to get their Marvel fix for half price, and each time the store resets, that allows less space for Hasbro. Hasbro makes their money when stores buy from them, but what happens is people stop buying Hasbro products, and stores are less likely to order from Hasbro. That's where Hasbro loses money. That overproduced backstock that ends up in Ollie's is bought from other retails for a fraction of the price. That's why it's such a big deal. The merchandise was produced for retail, no one wanted it, so it was resold to discount stores. Target, Walmart, and the rest won't gamble on these brands, and you'll see even less from Hasbro in the future. Some of the merch sells so poorly that you'll see it at Target and Ollie's the same time. There's a Lando figure from Return of the Jedi that was $24.99 at Target and $12.99 at Ollie's. Why would anyone pay full price? The full price ones don't move, and the discounted ones don't move much either. In retail, floor space is valuable, and Hasbro has been hogging all the space for themselves. In the case of Hasbro, people aren't even buying it at clearance. These stores are filled with Marvel, Star Wars, and other Hasbro IPs. There's no end in sight. What we'll be telling is the post-holiday season. If Ollie's and the rest can't sell through Wakanda Forever or Eternals, they'll eternally be on store shelves. All parties involved, Disney, Hasbro, retail stores, are aware of this issue. That's why the Marvels has a toy line of only three figures and nothing else. They're taking less risks on things consumers don't want, no matter the benefits to their ESG score elsewhere. In terms of Hasbro's own brands like G.I. Joe and Transformers, to a degree, you'll find them too at clearance. No matter what you collect, if it's a Hasbro toy, it's silly to pay full price because it all hits clearance sooner or later. My real sympathies lie with the employees who will lose their jobs because of decisions like these. It's doubtful the people that are fired are the ones responsible for the poor decisions made. Part of all this feels like a push for a future without any physical merchandise. See the movie, pre-order it after watching it, play the mobile game, watch the commercial. I miss the days of the Taco Bell tie-in, the song, the toy line, the cartoon series, and the video game. Things have changed for the worse. It feels like we're living in an alternate 1985 where Biff is corrupt and powerful and married to your mother. So unless a crazy wild-eyed scientist or a kid shows up to fix the timeline, Hasbro is screwed. Now speaking of crazy timelines, as I was producing this video, some news broke that, well, almost broke the internet. And what seems like a scenario pulled right out of fantasy, Hasbro is now licensing their toys to McFarlane Toys. Now, McFarlane Toys, owned and operated by Todd McFarlane, the comic book artist and businessman, has just won the Toy Producer of the Year award. And now they're getting in bed with Hasbro on the heels of this massive announcement of all the firings. McFarlane Toys has announced an exciting multi-brand licensing agreement with leading toy and game company Hasbro, adding Transformers, Power Rangers, G.I. Joe, and Dungeons and & Dragons to their Page Punchers lineup. Kicking off with Transformers and G.I. Joe products, each Page Puncher will include a full comic book and two articulated figures. So for those who don't know, you get a small action figure and a comic, and according to this, you're going to get two figures and a comic. Now according to McFarlane, and I agree with the sentiment here, Page Punchers are good because it gets comic books in people's hands. As you know, Disney shit the bed when it came to advertising Marvel comic books during the height of the MCU. Instead of getting people to go out there and buy books as well as seeing the movies and buying Funko Pops and all that other stupid shit, well, they ignored the comic book part, and now you get crap that doesn't look very good. But McFarlane, on the other hand, is trying to get people to buy comics, and this could be exciting to get kids reading. You want to get them an Optimus Prime and a Megatron, and it comes with Transformers number one? 
Cool. Sounds like a good deal. I'm curious to see what they do with the Power Rangers. I have a lot of the original Power Ranger comic books, and I grew up collecting Power Rangers toys, so it'll be interesting as an adult to see what they put out there. But it adds to the point that I always make. When it comes to consuming new things, well, we're just not. We're in a state of arrested development, where we only rehash the same things over and over and over again, and it's kind of tiring. I'm excited to see the next big thing or create it myself, but I'm not going to be getting it from McFarlane or Hasbro or any of these other places that want to just rehash the same old shit. But I do find it very interesting and telling that Hasbro and McFarlane are teaming up. We'll see what happens in the future, and we'll see if any of these toys end up on clearance at Ollie's, like all other Hasbro merchandise does. So folks, what did you think of this situation? What do you think of the firings from Hasbro, the layoffs, the situation with the toys that don't sell? You clearly watched the toy videos. We have the numbers. We have the proof. So tell me what you think down below. I know this was a weird video punctuated by a trip through Ollie's, but hopefully you enjoyed that as well. So like I said, folks, I'll be hitting the stores hard after the holiday season to see just what sold. Because if it doesn't sell at Christmas, well, it's probably not going to sell throughout the new year. But folks, if you want something that's been selling like crazy and you want to get yourself a copy before the holiday hits, head on over to StealingSolo.com right now. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I ship out orders every day at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're watching this video and you want to get yourself a copy of the book, well, go ahead and order it. It's going to be processed and shipped out to you today. And folks, if you catch this tomorrow, well, 3 p.m. that day, and so on and so on. I can only guarantee delivery to you by Christmas for the end of this week, but throughout the entire holiday season, I will be shipping out books the same day that they're ordered. Folks, Stealing Solo is something you can't find in stores. You'll never see it at Ollie's. It is a valuable book. It answers the greatest what-if question of all time. What if a group of disgruntled Star Wars fans kidnap Harrison Ford and force him to remake Star Wars in their basement? It's been called Laugh Out Loud Funny and the best Star Wars parody since Spaceballs. The website is powered by Shopify, so you get the reward-winning safety and security. And on StealingSolo.com, we're offering the Fandom Menace Edition for 50% off. You can get four books for the price of two, and all orders over $40 is free shipping. So folks, head on over to StealingSolo.com. Give yourself the gift that keeps on giving the entire year. Not the Jelly of the Month Club, but Stealing Solo, the book that will make you laugh all year long. So folks, I'm going to get out of here. I'll be back next time with more. Make sure you're watching us live on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m., Thursday nights at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and be on the lookout because 2024 is the year that WCBS takes over. We have a lot of new things cooking, and we're excited to serve you up a nice, fat, juicy WCBS steak throughout the new year and moving forward in the future. I'll be back next time with more. So in the meantime, folks, be smart, be safe, be cool, but always be excellent to each other. Thanks for watching today's video. Yes, it's over, but don't cry because there's more, a lot more from World Class Bullshitters. And there's only one way to get it. Hit that subscribe button below. When you do that, you'll get notifications and updates from World Class Bullshitters every time we go live. Basically, you won't miss anything. And if there's one thing I hate, it's FOMO. But the thing most people hate more than FOMO is fear of missing out on World Class Bullshitters because there's just some things you can't undo. So folks, do yourselves a favor and never miss anything from World Class Bullshitters. One last thing before you go, hit the thumbs up button. Not for our egos, no, they're big enough as this, but it does help us fight the algorithm here and well, it's man versus machine and that's the real fight. But if that's not your battle, that's okay. There's one last way you can help WCBS and that's going over to shopwcbs.com, picking up a t-shirt, a beer glass, a sweatshirt, a poster, all sorts of ways to back WCBS. The difference between us and other YouTube channels is I'm the artist that makes all this stuff. So if you enjoy art, Beyond t-shirts, you can even read our comic books. We got it all. We're called the epitome of pop culture for a reason, and no, again, it's not for our egos. So folks, make sure you're involved with every aspect of world-class bullshit. Not just for us, but do it for yourself. We're making the change in entertainment everybody out there wants to see. And a special thank you goes out to all of our wonderful patrons who make this content possible. Go to patreon.com slash worldclassbs to get involved and help out the channel.